Okay, so welcome to the October installment of the CATI 3D Experience User Group. Um, today, well, I'm Todd Myers. Today, we're gonna have presentations from Randy Simmons and uh, Matt Sherrick, and they'll be covering um, the X-Design app, which runs in the cloud, and simulations in the cloud. So I'm just gonna pass the ball over to Randy here, who can introduce this to us. So uh, just like Todd said, first thing we're gonna take a look at is parametric design in the cloud and specifically with the product called X-Design. Um, just a couple of housekeeping things. I wanna remind you how you can connect with the 3D Experience user group from CATI. You can use this QR code, which will take you to the website link uh, below that. And then as long as you have a license of any 3D Experience product, you will be able to join that user group and we can get you in there. And then this the next QR code is a different one. Uh, this one will take you uh, to, if you have any questions, this will send them to 3dxwelcome at cati.com, uh, an email address that we've set up for specifically asking 3D experience questions. Once again, this is being recorded and will be posted on the 3D experience user group landing page. CATI's website. Okay, so X-Design on the 3D Experience platform is a, a pretty big change in the way that a lot of people design 3D components. Starting with a unique single modeling environment, you're no, no longer constrained by working with parts or assemblies like in traditional design tools. So you can get right to work creating features and sketches to define your designs. It really doesn't matter whether you're in a part, whether you're in an assembly, you can make that decision later. Within X-Design, very familiar sketch and feature tools, but a ton of new ways to tackle design challenges. For example, while you're sketching profiles, X-Design will guide you in understanding which entities are geometrically constrained. As you add relationships between entities to capture your design intent, the color of those entities will change, and that definitely helps you define your sketches. X-Design is also always helping you in capturing your design intent by providing automatic relations as you sketch, and of course, additional relations can be added after the fact. Continuously drawing the same diameter circle, X-Design recognizes this and makes them equal to one another. Just a nice little benefit. Whenever you want to add more relations, like I said, simply select the two geometric entities and it will provide you with relations that make sense. X-Design will also shade the shape of the contours within the sketches to let you know what shapes can ultimately be created with them. And this lets you understand your overall design better while your sketches can take on more complexity. All right, we want to turn this into 3D from the 2D sketch, which is super easy in X-Design. We get multiple options for controlling the final shape in every feature dialog box. So this eliminates the need for different dialog boxes for different features, which is really cool. For example, the extrude command here can create features that are solids or surfaces. They can also be changed later to add material or remove material at any time, and even start completely new bodies all in a single command. Nearly all these features can be changed later to become a different feature in the future, all on the fly, without the need to start a different command as well. So from cuts to extrudes, to solids, to surfaces, to adding, to removing. Another example, maybe you created a chamfer and then you decided you'd rather have a fillet instead. Same idea, just a simple edit, change the feature type. This eliminates the need to delete the chamfer, recreate the feature as a fillet. So great flexibility as you create and change your designs, as well as eliminating the need to learn different features for similar tasks. As your designs take shape, this single modeling environment becomes more powerful than just creating new geometry. It also offers the flexibility of choosing which features make up entirely new components. So we've just been designing these extrusions and things, not worrying about whether that's a part or not but we have the ability to select those features and create a component out of those. Of course, these newly created components can be used in other designs, managed with all the uh, data management tools on the 3D Experience platform as well. 
In addition to creating parts on the fly, of course, there's also a more traditional approach to building designs. You can simply insert a component into another at any time. We just did a quick search, dragged and dropped a part in, mating that thing into place with standard mates, concentric, coincident, things like that. Finding the part is very easy because all the engineering data is saved and managed on the 3D Experience platform. So here we'll do another search for a fastener. Um, and then we'll minimize that search to the side and drag and drop that right into my X-Design app. These components can, of course, be moved and rotated with the dynamic movement triad or by grabbing onto the, uh, the, the model and dragging it. With mates, uh, we'll, we'll choose the two different faces and we get presented with intelligent menu of possible mates. It immediately moves those parts into position. Another cool thing you can do to streamline your workflow is if you're adding multiple instances of the same part, you can choose to instead to use copy with mates. So we'll mate one of these fasteners in, and then we want to copy that fastener with its mates. This not only adds additional instances, instances of that component, but also adds the exact same mates as the original. Sometimes you may need to change the component used in a particular instance. For example, from a longer fastener to a shorter one or something like that. So replace component, of course, will allow you to quickly search the 3D Experience platform for the file you're looking for and choose a replacement. You can also choose to replace all the instances of the component if you desire. This gives you the flexibility to look at how different components will interface in your design and do trial and error very quickly. One of the most innovative aspects of X-Design is its design guidance functionality. And this tool will let you generate geometry in a model based on loading conditions. You don't have to model the entire design, just pieces of the geometry where loads and fixtures need to be applied. In order to generate this geometry, you'll set up three key components, adding restraints, applying forces to existing geometry, and setting a build envelope for the size of the generated geometry. You can apply point loads, distributed loads, pressure, and torque loads. You can adjust the design volume to allow more or less room for generated shapes. And once these are set, you can click Generate, and X-Design does all the work generating the geometry. This is an iterative process it takes a few minutes to complete and results in a truly unique geometry designed specifically for your model. Then, of course, you can use sketch features to finalize the geometry from the generated shape using all the 3D modeling tools that we've seen provided in X-Design. Here we'll rough in the shape that we would like based off the suggested shape You can view various designs based on different loads using the same restraints. The load case manager allows you to turn loads on and off as well as vary the load mass. X-Design will definitely change the way you think about CAD and structured assemblies using these tools. So a very powerful single modeling environment, very easy to use mating tools, and the power of that generative design allows you to create models better and faster on any device you choose anywhere you'd like to work. This is a full cloud product. Um, I'd like to spend the rest of the time here going through some of the enhancements that were added into X-Design over the last year. Um, all these 3D Experience products are on a very aggressive release cycle about every two months. There's an update to those. So there's uh, been hundreds of updates to this product in the last year. These are my top 20 or so here. We'll go through these pretty quick. So the ability to publish a 3D model directly to your 3D Swim community for collaboration. And then along those same lines, the ability to save directly to 3D Drive right from X, X Design and get a shareable link in one step. The ability to select tangency for all the connected faces, edges, or sketch lines. A new rib tool was added with optional draft command. Spline handles for editing the shape of a spline. 
now possible to quickly find the midpoint of an edge automatically and apply that to a sketch relation or apply a relation to that. Some new creation methods for rectangles, three point and corner rectangle sketch commands. You now have the ability to move components with the robot or the triad. You saw that in the little demonstration there. That was added about halfway through the year. Much like uh, Sketch Expert that you may already be familiar with inside of Desktop SolidWorks, a tool was added in XDesign to help resolve overdefined sketches. You can collapse your search results to the side, as we saw in the demonstration, and drag and drop multiple items or multiple instances into an assembly in one operation. You can directly request access to a reserved component, and this will send a notification to who has that uh, reserved to the owner of that file. The design assistant tool will now show how many edges, faces, etc., are selected. Enhanced control over component transparency was added. New sketch creation tools uh, for midpoint centerline slot, three point arc slot, center arc slot, and parallelogram. A feature driven component pattern was added, uh, so a pattern of features in a part file can drive a pattern of parts in an assembly. You can now access the mates via the breadcrumbs. There's a filter to quickly show and hide all sketch constraints as needed. The mate helper tool will automatically recognize and suggest locations to replicate components. New parametric primitives were added to quickly sketch up cubes, cylinders, spheres, toruses, and etc. Some new mechanical mates for gear, rack and pinion, and cable joints. Tons of enhancements for touch device interactions were added. Ability to convert entities of an entire sketch without having to individually select them to save time. Reuse of sketch geometry from any existing model. And along those same lines, create custom library sketch geometry and insert it directly into any active design. New functionality to directly import components into your active assembly versus importing, saving the file, and then inserting. A couple more of these, hundreds of new materials to apply to your model. Fabric, glass, plastic, metal, organic, paint, rubber, stone, wood, and many more were added. A clearance check tool was added. The ability to single click to convert a sketch mechanism into a fully mated assembly where you're able to create the 3D parts. Helical curves were added in the one of the last updates this year. Copy and paste an entire sketch along with all the dimensions and all the constraints within it. The ability to dissolve components into features. So we saw in the demonstration taking features and turning them into parts or components in an assembly. Now we have the opposite of that where you can dissolve it back into features at the top level. And finally, the new ability to reverse the scale direction, which allows you to basically scale and mirror in one step by flipping it as you're scaling it. So quite a few enhancements in this past year in X Design. Once again, here is the link to connect to the CATI 3D Experience user group, and we'll see if we have any questions on XDesign, this first portion of today's webinar. Um, we did have one question. Um, basically, you mentioned improvements for touch devices. It says, will, will 3DX run on tablets, or do you mean my laptop with touch screens? Uh, both, absolutely. Um, so XDesign, any of these X apps, but especially X Design, is a cloud-based app. Um, it really doesn't matter what hardware you have. You could be running this on a Chromebook, on a tablet, on an old, really, really old computer. Um, as long as you have a web browser and connection to the internet, um, you, you would have the ability to run this. So it doesn't matter whether it's a Mac or a PC or any of those kinds of things. So yes, tablet, uh, even on a phone, you can. Uh, pull up a part and try to do some design on your on your phone screen. Okay, and uh, Randy, could you put that QR code back up for a minute? Sure thing. Randy, one more question's coming in. 
Uh, this is okay. This is the cloud. How do I get my files? Do I have to download them all the time? Uh, you broke up right when you said that. Do you have to what all the time? Do you have to download them all the time? I guess, do you have to download your files that you're making? Oh, all right, the time? right. Right. So, um, I mean, I, you know, it, you do have the ability to export them if you want to share them outside of the platform. Um, many different formats you can export, but um, just for, you know, accessing the files, opening them up in XDesign, you're connecting to the cloud to do that and you're using the cloud to run the software. So there is nothing installed locally there, but yes, you do have the ability to export files down to your local machine if you need to. Great. Okay. Well, thanks, Randy. Let's take a look cool. at uh, what Matt is going to be presenting to us today, which is uh, some simulation in the cloud. Yeah, absolutely. Randy, we're going to have to connect one of these days. That generative design tool in XDesign uh, looks like it'd be a great kind of marriage of technologies with the actual you know, full-blown uh, 3D experience simulation stuff. So you might have to do a little back and forth using that. Yeah. Um, that was a really neat, neat tool. So thank you for sharing that. Uh, let me just get all this WebEx garbage off my screen here. So. We see your screen now, Matt. All right, excellent. So you can see my title slide there. Um, yes. Yep, absolutely. Excellent. excellent. Well, thank you everybody for coming. Um, as our wonderful hosts have said, my name is Matt Schrack. I'm one of the, the sim gurus here at CATI and Elite AE, just like many of our hosts. And wanted to talk to you guys today a little bit about uh, the Smulia, which is the simulation brand that exists inside of 3D Experience. Um, as you'll see as we're going through, this uh, is not technically a cloud-based app. Uh, all of your data management and everything is stored in the cloud, but there is a, a local native install that has to be done for all your sim local simulation, uh, like pre and post processing. So you, you set up your simulations, uh, locally on a machine, and uh, you post pro you look at results locally on a machine. But as you'll see when we get towards the end, uh, there are a couple exceptions to this rule. So this is an instance of what we call the native apps of 3D Experience, which is installed locally. And uh, this example in particular is really neat. So we just have a simple tank uh, that's going to fall onto the ground. As you'll see inside of the tank, I have a solid body representing uh, the level of the fluid at this particular moment in time. Um, and we're actually gonna model that fluid with uh, what's called an SPH particle. Um, let me just show you the mesh. There's no need to go through all the mesh creation stuff. I find that a little bit boring, but you can see the tetrahedral element mesh uh, on the brackets that once held this tank that is now falling. Um, we can view the tetrahedral mesh of that interior water level component as well. So you can see that as I rotate around. Um, so that's just a basic tet mesh on that interior, vo interior volume. And then tet mesh is on the surfaces as well. So you can see you can do quads and triangles with this product. So the SPH particle stands for smooth particle hydrodynamics, which is a big fancy way of saying this is essentially simulating a ball pit, right? We give uh, all of these particles the properties of water. So they represent like the density of water and um, you know the viscosity of water and how they behave. Uh, so that way we can have these solid bodies that kind of represent how the water is gonna slosh around when we drop this. We have a rigid body just representing the ground, nothing crazy about that. As far as the rest of our model, we just have steel simulating everything, of course, with the exception of the water, uh, smooth particles. So, Next thing we'll do is we're going to launch the mechanical scenario creation app. And this is where you do all the real simulation stuff, like setting up loads and fixtures and things like that. Uh, we're going to begin by choosing an explicit dynamic step. The explicit solver is wonderful for uh, high energy, fast duration events like drop tests. So we'll just set a, a specific time where we want to simulate a half a second worth of stuff here. So just enter that in there, click OK. With explicit solves, you have to add in a mass scaling uh, parameter. And essentially what this is doing is it's setting a lower level uh, or a lower limit on the time step you can take in order to solve this. That's really all it's doing. Um, uses a bunch of big fancy terminology, but essentially the explicit solver is unconditionally stable. 
so you will always get an answer. It will not fail on you. Um, this just kind of sets a lower limit for that time step uh, so that they don't take a, too, too long to run. All right, so once we have the step defined, we can begin with the fun stuff, uh, doing like uh, initial conditions, which in this case, we know that in this model orientation, uh, our parts are falling at three and a half meters per second. So we just select the parts that are associated that are actually falling, so not the ground, but we select all the bodies and obviously the internal volume of the water. So you can see all the tank bodies there selected. We enter our initial velocity here, and we're gonna have to reorient those arrows you can see on the screen so that they point down. Really easy to, to set that stuff up. And then next thing we have to add in is gravity. So not only is this falling at this moment in time at three and a half meters per second, but we need it to accelerate a little bit as it's continuing to fall. And then finally, we need gravity to be the sort of the damper that uh, restricts the rest of the motion after it's hit the ground. So you could see that yellow arrow there indicating the direction of gravity, right? So with all of that set, um, we're getting close to running this thing. We just have to make sure that the ground doesn't move obviously, so go into our restraints, grab our, uh, our imported body to represent the ground here, and we're basically all set to go. So the, the platform, the simulation rules on the platform, you do have to set it up with the local install and post-process the local install, but because all the data management and everything is sort of backboned onto the cloud, uh, we can leverage cloud computing, which is far and above you know what we could do with maybe like a SOLIDWORKS product or something like that. So clicking simulate here, we have a few options. You can run it locally on our machine, interactive or non-interactive, but we're gonna leverage the cloud because the cloud is amazing for solving these types of studies. So we can use our cloud credits, which is essentially just buying computation hours on the cloud. And we can run this with up to 144 cores uh, on, the, on the cloud, which you know just has a, a credits per hour type of rate. And when we click OK, it's going to zip everything together in a nice little file and send it to those cores to get to work. And we get to come back later to the results, which is always the most fun part of the simulation. So that obviously was kind of a time jump there, but that's all right. Uh, so coming back to the results, you can see in our model, I have the, the skin of the tank transparent, but you can see all those smooth particles, uh, all those little spheres representing the, the density and viscosity of, of water inside of our tank, all right? So uh, we can go ahead and do a quick animation here where we can see um, how this thing falls and how those how that water interacts with the surfaces and sloshes around after you know the drop. We only simulated a half a second. Uh, we could have simulated longer if we wanted to, but you could get a pretty good idea of what's happening here. So we could plot displacement. You can see the displacement of each individual particle as well as the displacement of the tank itself. Um, we can plot velocity vectors of each individual node, which in this case looks a little busy, um, but it can be helpful for times when you're not quite sure how, uh, 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 which direction a part of the model is moving um, specific to a, a specific node. Plastic strain is one of my, go ahead. I had a question pop over, Matt. Sure. Um, the the solve of that liquid um, is that just a particle based liquid, or is it actually a mesh? The mesh is actually moving and and sloshing around in that scenario. Um, yeah, it it it's kind of both. So it uses a background like Lagrangian grid, okay. um, so that these elements are actually moving about that grid um inside of the constraint of solid elements and so it's a really sort of a hybrid uh fsi problem which is pretty neat so the second part of the question is can that be exported out say like as a mesh that you could potentially use in say an animation um possibly uh okay. i'm learning new things about this this all the time um so I'm just kind of clicking through some post-processing stuff here, but uh, I might have to follow up on that because that would be really neat to maybe render as a high quality animation and share. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's a great idea. I'll, I'm writing that down right now. That might be something really fun to do. Um, thanks, Bob. You always are a wealth of great things to do. <laughs> um, 
But yeah, so I mean, you guys can see the the power of this of this program here. The setup and the solve are just absolutely incredible. Um, ultimately, my favorite part about this is is the cloud backbone. So Randy was talking about the power of the cloud-based design with X Design and everything like that. Um, unfortunately, we can't post process results and everything like that um, on the cloud, uh, at least not in the full aspect, but there is a lightweight cloud-based app called uh, Physics Results Review that comes with a separate role um, that can do some light cloud post processing. So this is a video that I recorded on my phone it's logging into you know, your same tenant that you would log into normally on the platform and going to you know, the same dashboards here. So um, just wait for it to load. And I'm launching the physics simulation review app, which is included in the simulation collaborator role. And this allows you to open lightweight versions of your physics simulations. So I think that full physics simulation file is like 400 megs or something like that. Um, but it automatically saves out these lightweight versions that you can post process directly through a web browser on your phone. So this is those that same displacement plot we were looking at. I can swap it out to you know von Mises stress if I want to, and you, you can again view that same von Mises stress plot. And this is a 3D environment, so you can see I can rotate the model while it's animating and showing me these these live simulation results. And it's really intuitive with this touchscreen device. And, I know we had a couple questions based on that a few moments ago. Um, but again, yeah, it's the same kind of pinch and drag and rotate that you would expect off of a touch screen. Um, so it's really neat that you're able to do this. I mean, you could be in Bangladesh on your cell phone and looking at simulation results if you wanted to. You're not kind of linked to your computer, so to speak. So we can switch transparency materials. We could take measurements from here. We can do section views. We can do annotations on this screen and then share that annotation to a 3D swim community uh, so that others in the project who maybe don't have full blown simulation roles can review our results and uh, give us feedback. So really neat capabilities um, baked into this since it's backbone is on the cloud. Uh, last minute or so, I just want to go over some other examples of cool simulations that we've solved. Uh, so these are blow molding and uh, like a bird impact on a propeller simulation. These both involve two different types of essentially fluid structure interaction built into the structural solver. So SPH particles, like we saw today, are on the right. Uh, they're simulating essentially a bird being torn to pieces, unfortunately, as it hits a, a turbine propeller. And then a fluid cavity on the left where we can actually apply an internal pressure that can deform a structure to fill a mold and we can maintain a pressure versus volume a control curve based on that which is really neat uh, some neat impact analyses that we've done uh, obviously car crash is a really big um, really big thing to look into nowadays cars are getting safer and safer and we have technology like this to thank for that and then a uh, nice drone drop test you can see there um, you can actually see parts coming apart from each other and kind of flailing in the wind, so to speak. And then the general contact algorithm is my other favorite thing. So on the left, you can see uh, we have uh, this part with hundreds and hundreds of holes in it, and we're collapsing these holes on purpose. And there's this very complex interaction of these contacting surfaces um, as it's going through the model. So that can be really difficult to solve that type of interaction, especially with hyperelastic materials. So platform handles it beautifully. Looks like an, uh, the wheels on the new Bobcats. Yeah, I was gonna say, uh, yeah, they have those new single piece wheels that are made to kind of collapse like that. Yeah, so that was that was actually kind of the, uh, the inspiration to making that model. So nice. glad you picked up on that. Um, and then the, the last cool thing I wanted to highlight here is that we can actually model damage and failure. So most FEA codes, it'll tell you where it's going to fail or where it could fail via just a red swath of elements, but we can actually give failure definitions to specific elements um, and actually model them coming apart from each other. So you can see the fan on the right there, you know, plastic fans got all these crazy uh, hyperelastic strings coming off of it. But on the left, you could see a Sharpie impact where uh, they're very, very slowed down, obviously. But once those elements reach their ultimate stress, they're actually able to dissociate from each other, a break continuum essentially, and come apart, which is really. So that's kind of all I had, guys. Were there any questions that came up during my segment? I know, Bob, you 
you, you, you mentioned one, but are there any others that came up? I haven't seen any others pop over. Um, okay. that's, that's a lot of fun information. I, I can't wait to, to dig into some of that with you sometime here soon. Oh yeah. Happy to help. I've been really enjoying learning it and. Uh, maybe in another in a future user group meeting, I'll show you guys the power of the fluid solver on the platform. So. We should show the fan um, definition to like some of our customers out in St. Louis. We got a few that are actually fan manufacturers. Uh, yeah, I think <laughs> that might have been the model that we showed them that we came up with for a demo for those oh. people. So okay, uh, so <laughs> you, you, yeah. you, you already beat me to the punch. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think I know exactly who you're talking about. So yeah, no worries. Well, that was great. Thank you so much, Matt and Randy for presenting for us today. And thanks everyone who attended and uh, participated by asking questions. Uh, Bob is recording this session. So we'll have that uh, land on the 3D experience user group landing page uh, on the website. Um, uh, feel free to contact us with those QR codes. I don't know if we can switch over to Randy again yeah. to show those codes. Sure. Um, can you take a screenshot of those with your phones while we're up here? That'll open up either an email to us, to the 3D Welcome Group, uh, where you can ask questions to us directly or get more involved. Um, and then there's also a link to be invited to the 3D Experience User Group that we're hosting on one of our tenants. Uh, and then you could directly contact us through that environment. So uh, let's see here. Uh, Randy, are you able to share that screen and uh, pull um, up? I thought I was. I'm not seeing the screen let's yet, see. so. Oh, you have to actually tell it to share and then you have to say share. <laughs> <laughs> let's see. There we go. Okay, so this is to get the invitation uh, to join our user group. It's just like a Facebook stream where you can share uh, photos, uh, chat with us, uh, ask questions. And then the next slide will be an email uh, to us. It'll, it'll go to Randy, Bob, and myself there, 3dxwelcome at cati.com. Um, and then you can ask us questions about how to get more involved or find information about the products that uh, we're representing and that we display in these user groups. All right, so thanks again to everyone and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you next month. We're going to talk about uh, all the what's new content that they're releasing for the general release of uh, 3D Experience 2022. Excellent. Well, thank you guys for having me. Thanks everybody for attending. I hope you all have a great day. Matt.